Does LeBron get ring number five? Yes. The, I hate to be this guy. The, the Lakers, <laughs> be the guy. All right, the Lakers are the clear-cut best team in basketball. What's up, what's up? Welcome to Laces Out, presented by the NBA. I'm Ashley Nicole Moss. This is Jarrell Harris. And Jarrell, it's our season finale. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. We made it. We here. But before we get all sentimental, we went ahead and traveled to Detroit. And if we're in Detroit, there's only one person who can show us around, and that's Jalen Rose. Check it out. First of all, Fresh. Thank you. Definitely Thank you. need one of these because I done. can definitely fit this with my done Michigan done. dunks. I know you done. know how yes, I get indeed. down. So I need to ask you why Detroit? Obviously you're from here, but that's the easy answer. Mm -hmm. Why Detroit and why this particular area? My hometown, it made me what I am. You know, Jay once said with Sauce Money and what the game made me, not what the fame made me. Listen. Right? That's right. No amount of money could change me. And so I didn't want the scholars in the teachers to look out the window and see pain mm. like it exists but we try to make school and escape as much as possible and so we're on Comstock Park and we have a tennis court we have a softball backstop you'll see young people out there practicing football and pal and stuff just, just to give them a sense of hope because on the block you can lose your innocence really early. Yeah. But also, it's an 11th month school. Yes. So what does that mean exactly? Because you think a school, it's not 11 months long. That's almost Correct. a year. Explain a little bit more what that means. I think that an 11 month motto is a progression of what we need to have in America. Like getting out of school in June and going back in September and thinking that young people are gonna retain that information that's inaccurate. Like when I was a student, yeah, I love getting out for the summer. Yeah, <laughs> what up? Yeah. But we're not going to be able to compete in a global economy like that. And so in 11 months, it's basically in July, if you fail a class, you have summer school. Yeah. If you pass all of your classes, college experience, internship. We also provide trades for our scholars, sports, extracurricular activities. So it's full service. What did your high school do for you when you graduated? Not a thing. <laughs> that part. That's what, also what yeah. makes us different. Our college success staff, they match you with a college, they support you while you're in college, we fundraise for you, make sure you have all of the support that you need. The Fab Five, one of the most polarizing, one of the most entertaining, one of the most historic college teams in the history of basketball. Do you think there will ever be another? Respectfully, no. In the 80s, I looked up the multiple teams. I looked up to the Georgetown Hoya teams led by John Thompson. I looked up to the UNLV running Rebels and my brother Anderson Hunt and Jerry Tarkanian. And I looked up to the University of Michigan squad and I saw you rocking the dunks, they look cold. And I bring <laughs> that up for a reason, because those were team shoes. The Hirachi was a Fab Five shoe. Right, that, that's, that changed the game. That shoe has been re-released two or three times. And they're extremely hard to get now. Exactly, like, extremely, right? Yeah. So, so we had a shoe. We helped embrace hip hop and rap music at a time when mainstream America wasn't doing it. And then just fashion wise, just wearing longer shorts, um, wearing bald heads, playing with a personality. And I'm just happy that I get a chance to look in the rear view mirror and see a lot of people who didn't like us or remember the days where I was a villain to the public? Imagine this face, I used to be a villain. <laughs> if you look at uh, some of the most hated college players of all time, like I'll be on that list. Top 10? That's crazy. Are you top 10? Unfortunately, I don't want to be, but I, I am. So now with the NIL, players can profit off of their name, their image, their likeness. How is that going to change college sports and the athlete? It's going to change it in a lot of ways. You're still going to have the elite players right after high school with a big decision. Many of them in a couple of years are going to go straight to the NBA. Then you're going to see they, those that go to the G League, mm -hmm. and then they're going to be those that still end up in college and or overseas. So now just create options. But for certain colleges, you're going to see 
they're not gonna embrace it the way we're talking about it. Yeah. See, right now we're talking about it and we're celebrating it like John Doe College is gonna help you get NIL. And that's not necessarily true. Let's talk new rookie class. Okay. All right. Detroit basketball. No doubt. Got what up, though? Cade Cunningham. Uh -huh. I know you were extremely excited. You yes. were at the draft in yes. Brooklyn, yes, place indeed. that birthed me. Yes, indeed. How excited are you for the future of the Detroit Pistons? So it's one thing to have a number one pick, but it's another thing to have a consensus number one player. Mm. And that's a difference. And he was that in this draft. And could dribble, pass, and shoot gonna compete defensively, and is gonna be a terrific leader. To go with our other young players, Killian Hayes, Bay, um, Stewart. So I think we building something special. Dwayne Casey's big coach of the year. And shout out to, you know what? To the Detroit Pistons for their support with this school. See, there are a lot of teams that play in your hometowns. There are a lot of companies that make money where you live, but not many of them actually give back. See, the Detroit Pistons have been supporting me in Platinum Equity and their owner, Tom Gores, since the inception of this school. And so, as somebody whose father played for the Pistons and was also a number one overall pick, that's my favorite team. Yeah. And so, I'll be there to cheer them on. Kate will be Rookie of the Year. Oh. We will be in the playoffs this year. And oh. yeah, I said it and I ain't stutter. Those are two big predictions. Yes, that part. I want to ask you, MVP, who are you going with? Your ooh. two early predictions. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you who should win it. OK. But they're not. Who's, who should win it? Yeah. Giannis should win it every year. That's we we in we in that era right now. Just so y'all know, if y'all ain't been paying attention, we in the Greek freak yeah. era. It's gonna be what well, he gonna be thirty and fifteen. He he figured out. Let me tell you what I saw. I was at the game and I saw the switch click on in his head. He's like, they can't stop me. So Giannis will be in that conversation. Tis you know, I say KD <laughs> gonna win MVP. Okay. Yeah, KD. All right. So NBA rapid fire. You ready? Okay. Just a bunch of questions right, back to back. Mm -hmm. Are the Lakers? too old, or are you concerned about their age and the longevity of the season? I'm concerned that they're not going to have a top one or two seed in the West because of that age. Mm -hmm. LeBron will be low managed, so will AD. So that means their age is going to have an effect. Russell, however, is why you bring him to LA, because he plays fast. And even though he's 32 years of age, it, he's going to be a guy that helps get them through the regular season. But once the playoffs start, nobody in the West beating them four out of seven. Okay, next nobody question. Nobody in the West. Does LeBron get ring number five? Yes. The, I hate to be this guy. The, the <laughs> Lakers, be the guy. All right, the Lakers are the clear-cut best team in basketball. Do the Nets stay healthy enough to come out of the East this yes, year? Yes, yes. They got humbled by Giannis. And even though they dealt with some injuries, um, because James Harden had a hamstring injury, I'm not going to say because he started the season out of shape, it had an effect. But I will say they're going to come in to this season more focused, more disciplined because they just saw the Bucks do it. And because of that, they'll play more than 20 games as a collective. And yes, the Nets win the, the, Nets win the East. The Lakers win the West. The Lakers win it all in six. Big shout out to the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy. Jarrell, I know you've never been to Detroit, but if you do go, the Fab Five member himself, mm -hmm. Jalen Rose, got to show you around. It was so dope. Yeah, you have to tell me all about it. Yeah, yeah. listen, it was, it was great. But we are not alone. Our season finale, we couldn't do it without him. It's our extraordinary producer, Dakota London's in the building with a fresh cut. Okay, Jalen Rose hairline. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> that boy's <Happy>. sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Happy season finale, everyone. So very, very proud of you for, and everybody involved mm -hmm. getting to this point. So since the season finale, I have a game. Oh, <laughs> you know, I love it. I love, I love, game. It. I love Now, it. we all know that sneakers and anything in the fashion industry are expensive. So, yeah. let's guess some prices. Ooh, I'm going to be good at this because I'm yes. a shopaholic. The name of the game is Name Your Price. So, item one, and Jarrell, you actually asked me this before, what was my favorite shoe? Ooh, this might okay. be it. Okay. The Jordan 1 Mochas. Mm -hmm. This is based off my size. Okay, so that's that's, that's a game changer. For resale, 
what do you think is the Ooh. price? Jarrell, you can go first. Five, ten. Okay, Ash? Pure ten. I'm gonna go with more like 600. Okay, that was really good. You were only off by $10. Dang! Oh, the price is yeah, 520. Let's go. That's crazy. All right, this one. Let's go. Ash, you should have the advantage with this. Oh, Ooh. easy. I do not. Chanel lambskin. Is it the miniature <laughs> one? Is it the medium size or it's the big boy? It's the double medium. The double medium? I mean, it depends on the season, Ooh. but I'm gonna give it a cool like 8,500. Okay. Ooh. Um, I'm gonna go with 8,400. This guy. <laughs> Playing it safe. I like it, but you had it right. Okay. The, the actual price is 9,500. Ooh, I, I it's hard to it's hard to gauge the size, but I know it's around that 8,500. Listen, I have my I, eyes on that bag for my entire life. When I looked life. up the picture and I saw that leather, I said, "Oh yeah, that's yes. that's almost 10 G." Uh -huh. Okay, next one, Gucci slides. Ooh. Jarrell. Shout out to Future, Future Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> Give me uh, three bands, three K. Okay. For some Gucci slides. I don't know. Spot? I don't no, know. I don't know. I'm gonna say I'm being generous with this because I think it's actually a little bit lower. I'm going to say like 1500 but it's actually, I don't think that much. Oh, yeah. You're, you're both way off. Yeah, yeah. It's more, it's more like eight something, I It's more say. like it's only 290 What? 290 for real? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to go get some Gucci. <laughs> well, it depends on what season they are, too. This is There's a lot of stipulations Her in this her game. season. It, oh it makes God, a difference. No. All right, let's go Yeezys. The oh, Wave yeah. Runners. So oh, I know this. Ooh. Jarrell, you go first. I'm going to say 400 Okay. No, I think they're a little bit more than 400. I want to go like 485. Jarrell. What? Let's go. 430. All right, tie game. Okay. Last one. Ooh. Nike Off White Dunks Low Lot 16. Ash, mm. you are first. This Damn. is your sneaker, too, though. This is not my sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dang. I'm gonna go 610. Okay. I'm gonna go with 615. Wow, this guy's <laughs> such a cheater, yo. You won. Yes! <laughs> it was 480. Damn. Oh, what? Yeah. So everybody has a vice, right? Some are worse than others, but if you're like me, your credit card statement goes ahead and shows that you may have an issue with shopping, sneakers specifically. So the question is, how do you know you have a sneaker problem or addiction, mm -hmm. if you want to call it? Make it the extreme. Yeah, uh, definitely when you don't have no more room in your damn house. Like, like you? Yeah, like me. Um, I've heard it from my wife plenty <laughs> of times. Also, if you are like scounging for change and spending money oh, you yeah. don't That's have true. for sneakers, I feel like sneakers are a luxury, right? But I also feel like everybody wants the hottest shoes. I feel like you're pressured sometimes to get it. But if it's between rent and getting a pair of like mocha ones, Pick the rent. Yes. You can't live in your shoes, okay? <laughs> you just can't do it. It's just not okay. But exactly. you can understand the addiction. Mm -hmm. I want to go as far as saying, if you continuously get on that sneakers app or any of those apps and just set yourself up for disappointment time and time again, you may have a problem. That's everyone, though. Like, Dakota would know. Yes. Dakota has a problem. <laughs> he has a problem. Yes. No, no, but no. He's the re he I 100% have a problem. I 100% have a problem. I, I think... The first part of fixing a problem <laughs> is admitting that you have one. I don't know if that's true because I admit that I have a shopping problem and this is my Bank of America or rather my Amex card statement says that I haven't learned my lesson. Yeah, I don't think I've learned my lesson either. Whether it's through Capital One, whether yeah. it's through oh boy. PNC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Amex, if you're watching this, I'm single-handedly <laughs> keeping you in business. You're welcome. And now it's time for everybody's favorite segment, a little game we like to call that game presented by the NBA. And every game needs rules, and that is where Dakota comes in to lay down the law. Yes, so final that's game segment of season one. <laughs> but y'all know the rules, three topics, winner out of two of the three wins the segment. You both get 30 seconds to state your case. Best argument is the winner. All right, topic one. 
Are the Jordan 11 Cool Grays overrated? Jero, you can go first. No, overrated? Is that, is Jordan that a serious question? Jordan overrated. You're asking yes. this no, guy? No, but a Jordan 11? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, the Cool Grays, they go with everything. I like the low tops. I like the regular ones. Um, Jordan wore them when he's with the Wizards as well. And I think they're a perfect sneaker. They're, they're good. I just, I you, did you mention Jordan and the Wizards in the, that's, that's. Uh, I mean, he, he rocked them. We like to forget that good. era. <laughs> <laughs> he still put up numbers. Stop playing with Uncle Mike. But. Ash. <laughs> I mean, overrated is a strong word, but I will say they're not the best Jordan release of all time. I think that it has its own like cult culture, if you will. It has its own following, but there's, there's just been so many other silhouettes and colorways that Jordan has come out with. And the storyline behind Behind them are so much better than that. I don't even remember Jordan's wizard era. I just erased that entire chapter from my mind. Like it never happened. Mm -hmm. After he left the Bulls and he went to go play baseball and then he came back, that was the end of his career. He never played basketball ever again. So I'm gonna go with not overrated, but also not the best. I'm gonna go with your argument. She played it safe though. No, but, no, no. Okay. but here's the thing, I, and there's a lot of bias mm -hmm. with a surprise. I, I really don't like the cool grades and I don't understand why people love them so much. Is it just a great thing? Like a great No, 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 it's not, it's not, no, it's not just a great, cause I, I love a lot of great colorways. Mm -hmm. I just don't like the patent leather in gray yeah. and that's what sets me off. You know what yeah. I think it, yeah, I agree. I think the patent leather looks really good like on the red and black ones mm -hmm. because it's their, that contrast, you yeah. know what I mean? But I think the cool grays, it's so much gray that you can't really appreciate the patent leather aspect exactly. of it because it all kind of blends, which is what it's supposed to look like though, yeah. right? It's supposed to be like mm -hmm. one complete entity, but I think you lose that artistic and just like beautiful silhouette of what it looks like with the patent leather because it's all the same color. Yeah. But that's just my personal opinion, I could be wrong. All right, topic two, uh, best general release. So for those that don't know what that means, that means like you can walk into any Foot Locker, finish line, whatever, and just grab them. So uh, Ant, you can go first on this. I don't have a general release off the top of my head, but I can just think of a general sneaker that I really like that you can still walk into a store and get, and those are the Blazers. I think that you can really just walk into any store anywhere, whether it's an outlet, whether it's a Foot Locker, whether it's, you know, a little boutique in your neighborhood, and you can still really get a cool pair for not that expensive. And I think everyone should have it in their closet. I think that it's a shoe that goes with everything, male, female, it looks good on everyone's foot. It looks good with, like I said, so many different outfits. It's a staple, and I think that it's appreciated that you can still walk into a store and cop a pair and not have to sell your rib, so. Dang, um, you cheated because I know Dakota loves the blazer, and I know he's gonna give you the point. I'm a lot no of things, but I'm not a cheater. <laughs> so, but my pick is gonna be Harachis. We talked about Jalen Rose earlier. Um, he kind of made these popular back in the '90s. So, a pair of Harachis in the summertime is it's the perfect. It's See, the look, you just uh, making assumptions, and I'm actually going with you. Ooh. I agree. I love Harachis, mm -hmm. and uh, my biggest reason for them is they're super comfortable. Yeah. And yep. like walking around in New York, having a shoe where it's like, okay. I can throw these on, and after three, four hours, if I'm on my feet, I'm still cool. Harachis yep. are that. Yeah. Okay. Right. See, look. You, you see. You get assumptions, man. I tell mm -hmm. you. Okay, we got a tie. I love this. For the win, design your own sneaker. Name, look, whatever. You only got 30 seconds. Drill, go first. Mm. You know, it's not going to be no Ash Mids, you know, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's gonna be the air rails, something like that, you know. The air um, rails. Get some Italian leather on it. Um, keep it low. Keep it a low cut, you know. Something like that. Cool laces. What Ain't nobody think? buying that shoe. People buying it. <laughs> Ain't nobody <laughs> buying that shoe. They love it. Ain't nobody coming here Listen. to see you, Otis. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna go in a completely opposite direction because I'm not a psycho. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Ash Force Ones, okay? It's gonna be a simple, classic New York style shoe. Obviously the silhouette of an Air Force One, but it's also going to have, I like a lot of monochromatic type of vibes. I'm thinking like a beige suede, kind of looking like a, a little bit of like that material that you see on Tim's, but having it in different colors, right? Tim's. So the you don't toe, have any <laughs> no, the toe is gonna be that dark wheat, and you're gonna have a 
lighter wheat on the inside of it. It's gonna have laces in different colors, white, all beige, black, if you want to change it up a little bit, but it's gonna be a nice fall shoe that I think that you can get a lot of use out of in New York City and wear with a lot of different things. Sound uh, like some yeah, bricks. You, you lost because you got, <laughs> the, the minute you said black, the game I didn't say it was black, I said black laces. No, 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 yeah. but you can't have an Ash Force One without having a black no. Force One. Ooh. No, that yeah. is not yeah. true. So, you said let's design go. my own shoe and my shoe is going to be monochromatic colors of beiges and grays and whites. The black is not going to exist in my collection. It's my collection. I can do what I want. Oh, mm -hmm. well, either way. I lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's game. <laughs> you know what? That's cheating. The Finally. only reason I lost is because I have a Cowboys jersey on and I'm sitting between a Giants and an Eagles fan. So mm. I'm going to go ahead and say this whole game was rigged. I didn't even, I haven't even loss. clown you on that yet. I'm oh, yeah, not even, for, for sure, I'm not though. accepting the loss. I'm not accepting it. Okay? They, they're on the books. Neither of you ever accept when you lose, just for the record. I'm not I never lose. It. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, that's game, everybody, presented by the NBA. Since the last episode, we have to we have to like finally get an answer on this. Jarrell, <laughs> what is the goat shoe? You can't uh, have 70 answers. Can I break it down for you guys? Yes, please. All please right. All right. give can me the explanation. Down. Like, since if you guys were listening on episode one, <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are listening, I said the Air Jordan 3. If we were listening, are my favorite sneakers of all time. I think the 11s are the most beautiful sneaker ever, but the Jordan 1 is the best sneaker ever when it comes to like masses and like storytelling. It doesn't get any better than that. I think it's fascinating how but you what, contradicted yourself so much answer? in one sentence. What's the that was answer? absolutely sensational. So, like that is a talent. <laughs> God bless, that is a talent. I've never seen someone Yo, be able to do so that like that. Is the question my favorite sneaker of all time or what is the best? What is the best the sneaker Air of all time? Okay. Air Jordan 1. Only took eight episodes. <laughs> yeah, so last episode and the episode before that when he kept switching up his answer. I didn't switch it up. You did switch it. Oh my The ball don't lie. I've been saying this. The ball don't, 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 make, lie. don't make Gene pull out the receipts. Pull out the receipts on him, Gene. Gene is our amazing producer that you never see. He's behind the scenes, but he works his magic. And he needs to go ahead and pull up the receipts oh, on you because you're out here lying to your I'm fans. I'm deleting the tapes. <laughs> I'll be nice. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with you guys. Um, I think Ashley is a rising star. So like Aww. working alongside you has been awesome. So I'll say that. Oh wow. I kept Aww. it. I, I was kept not it expecting simple. a compliment. I, I know. It worked. So. My, see, my, my heart is, <laughs> is melting. It's a little icy, but it, it melts every now and then. First of all, love the entire team at Laces Out. I think what we've developed and what we've created, it started off as a dream and now it's a reality and it's gotten even bigger than I think we can anticipate. But, um, or we could rather anticipate. But I feel like also one of the things that I really enjoyed was just all the different features that we got to do. We got to meet so many dope athletes, you know, from Erica Wheeler to Robbie Anderson, Jalen Rose, Nick DePaula. I mean, the list goes on and on. And to have all these guests just kind of take, you know, that leap of faith with us and be on a brand new show and extend their time and, you know, let us into their homes and their collections and sit down and speak with me and share their thoughts, it was, um, it was a really good time, and I also enjoyed seeing Jarrell contradict himself multiple times on the show. <laughs> you see that it? was one of the best parts. I'm done I gave being you nice. a compliment. I'm not being Hold nice. On. I gave two. you a compliment in the beginning, but then I had to reel it on back. <laughs> I gotta say, I take a lot of pride in the fact that the two main producers are black, the talent is black, our editors are black. I take a lot of pride in that, and that's like that's something that's like very near and dear to me. So like, yeah. it's been a fantastic season and I look forward to what else we have coming down the, down the line. Yeah, I think it's dope that we were able to kind of set that precedent here at SI and I also feel like, you know, hopefully other shows kind of follow suit. I think that was really cool. And you know, it's only up from here. We did it big season one, which means yeah. we got to do it even bigger season two. No pressure. Well, guys, season one of Laces Out, presented by the NBA, is officially in the books. And on behalf of myself, Jarrell, Dakota, Gene, and the entire team at Laces Out, we appreciate you guys rocking with us all season long. And we'll be back, and we'll be bigger than ever. Peace.